the stomach turns. When last we left Canoga Falls, Marion was just saying goodbye to the local handyman. Tell me, Ned, how long have you been doing odd jobs? About five years now. Oh, here's your bill, ma'am. Eighty dollars? Isn't that a little high? Some jobs are odder than others. <laughs> He's such a wonderful handyman. Leaves everything in such good shape. <laughs> More coffee, Renee. No, thank you. But, Renee. You always drink coffee when you tell me of your problems. But I have no problems, Marion. You have no problems? No. Everything's just hunky-dory. Oh. Ginger peaches, tip-top. It just couldn't be better. Oh. <sighs> Renee? Yes? I have a problem. You have a problem? <laughs> Dear, let me give you some good advice. Oh, please. Look for the silver lining. All good things must come to an end. And he who hesitates is lost. Those are the exact same words I always say to you when you have a problem. I know. They're written here on your cup. <laughs> this time, Renee, those wonderful words of wisdom are, are meaningless. Oh, what is wrong, Marion? Oh, dear. Is it that you're so painfully ordinary and homely? <laughs> is it that you're doomed to be a frustrated old maid? No. Is it that you don't have a friend in the world, including me, your best friend? <laughs> well, so what's your problem? Nothing compared to those questions. <laughs> what is it? My problem is financial. I'm practically penniless. Oh, yes, yes, yes. They'll all be coming after me soon. The butcher, the grocer, the doctor. The handyman. You're right. There is a silver lining. <laughs> There, you see, dear, it's always darkest before the storm. Tomorrow is another day when you walk through a storm. Hold your head up high. <laughs> I'll get it. Why, hello, and who are you? Don't you remember me, Mother? <laughs> of course I remember you. How could a mother forget her only daughter? Hello, Betty. Joyce. <laughs> I was close. Come in, come in. <laughs> well, what have you been up to? Well, I ran away from home two years ago and became a Las Vegas showgirl. Do you do much gambling? Once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the baby's father? A fellow I used to meet every night. Oh? What does he do? He's the house detective. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Well, I have to be running along now. I have a show to do. Oh, what's your hurry, daughter? I have to get into my costume. <laughs> well, goodbye, dear. Bye, Mom. Eat a hot lunch. <laughs> Marion? Renee, I am taking everything that means anything in the world to me, and I am leaving Canoga Falls. <laughs> there. But where will you go? I don't know. I'll, I'll find a job. Doing what? I don't know. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll sell myself if I have to. Oh, Marion, Marion, nickels and dimes aren't going to help. It's no use. No use. Nothing you say will make me stay. But 
Marion. All right, I'll stay. <laughs> I have an idea. What? Summer is coming to Canoga Falls. <laughs> the summer people will be here soon. I could rent rooms and make oodles of money. Why, that's a grand idea. I can put a sign in the window. I know, I'll go make the sign right now. Good. <laughs> Look, for rent, rooms, gosh. I sure hope somebody sees it. Yes, I'll get it. <laughs> what? Hello, Lester. My goodness, it's Lester Standish, the well-known ham actor who comes to Canoga Falls Playhouse every summer to display his versatility and his new toupee. Good day, ladies. I was looking for a room to rent for the summer, and I saw your sign. But I didn't even put it in the window. That's all right. I'm a peeping Tom. Oh. <laughs> you are versatile. <laughs> Thank you. But seriously, I'm looking for living accommodations, suitable ones, of course. You know, I want something elegant but comfortable, something lavish but tasteful. I shall require three gourmet meals a day, a color television, and a private telephone. I'm prepared to offer five dollars a week. Upstairs, first door on your right. But Marion, that's your room. In that case, three dollars a week. Payable in advance. <laughs> but seriously, Marion. Very seriously, Marion. In the company this summer, you know our company? Uh huh. We have an opening for a leading lady. Oh. Somebody your age, Marion. Same coloring, same height. Really? Would you like to do it, Renee? Love to. Come, let us rehearse in my suite. My suite. <laughs> oh, another crisis. Oh, I must find courage somewhere. Somehow. I'll be brave. I'll be strong. I'll get it! Murdoch, the mean banker who's come to foreclose on my house. I'll pretend I'm not home. <laughs> Open up, Marion. I'm not home. Stop pretending. <laughs> Hello, Felix. What a pleasant surprise. Come off it, Marion. I'm foreclosing on your house. <laughs> Felix Murdoch, you're the meanest man in the world. Thank you. <laughs> Boo, hiss. Boo. Yes. I love hissing and booing. You don't hear that much anymore. <laughs> so you've come for my house, have uh, you? Not only your house, the whole kit and caboodle. It's a wipeout, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> Everything from head to toe. What size are your shoes? Nine and a half. Oh, drat, I'm a seven. <laughs> I'll settle for the wig. <gasps> See, Murdoch, what could a mean banker like you possibly want with my wig? Don't be pushy, Marion. <laughs> You know what I think? I think you're running a fly-by-night operation. <laughs> That'll cost you, Marion. Okay, let's have them. Let's have what? I'm repossessing your contact lenses. Oh, no! No! Come on, Marion. Tinkle, tinkle. <laughs> the other one, too. Oh. You did that on purpose. You're rotten, Marion. <laughs> See what else I can grab around here. <gasps> you must be joking. <laughs> oh, Marion, look at this room. You have such tacky taste. I beg you to let me decorate. Oh, Felix, please, don't throw me out into the cold. Don't give me that little even number. It's 72 degrees outside. <laughs> Perhaps we could talk this over. After all, you're a man and I'm a woman. I didn't hear that, Marion. I said... If you repeat it, I'll scream. <laughs> Giving you 20 minutes to clear out of here, Marion. Wait, Felix! What is it? I have something to say. What is it that Marion has to say? And now that she must leave Canoga Falls, is there anyone in town who can fill her shoes? <laughs> and what about Marion's runaway daughter? Will she give up gambling in Las Vegas or try for double or nothing? <laughs> and what about Lester Standish and Renee? Did he really give her an audition 
or was he just fiddling on the roof? <laughs> and what about Marion herself? Will she end up in the poorhouse, or will they turn her away because she has no money? <laughs> For the answer to these and other probing questions, tune in tomorrow as the stomach turns.